Look at this Mad Dog 50. I think it was going about 30 something miles an hour when I got it new. Did the free mods, you know, exhaust, things like that. Put the NCY cam in it and a Nibby carburetor and got it up to 43 miles an hour. I put the Polini high speed 95 millimeter variator on it and that was a disaster. It really went a lot slower. It just didn't have the power to push the 95 millimeter variator. Figured it was time to put the big bore kit on it and was pleasantly surprised. Got to 46 miles an hour and way quicker. So I figure I have power now to run the bigger variator. So I'm gonna revisit this high speed Polini variator. I'm gonna put the 95 millimeter variator back on it. I would suspect it's gonna get less quick. So the zero to 30 will get slower. The eighth mile might get slower, but it's gonna be faster on the top end. Let's see what happens. Even though I got the uh, big variator, the three gram roller still makes it feel pretty quick. Still hitting like 9,000 RPM immediately. So it may not have changed anything. Those three gram rollers may not be heavy enough to even push that variator out and get that belt up on top of it. Yeah, there's 9,500 RPM already, 38 miles an hour, 40, 42, 43, 9,200 RPM. Looks like 47 is pretty consistent with these rollers. But I'm only turning 9,400 RPM. That's about where I want, I think. I was definitely maintaining uh, 47 miles an hour. The problem is if I go to heavier rollers to get more speed, I'm going to lower those RPMs. And if I get them too low, I'm not going to make enough power to go that speed. I also still haven't adjusted the carburetor yet for the big bore kit. I imagine I could burn a lot more fuel so I can increase the main jet and maybe get more power. So I expected to speed up significantly with a 95 millimeter variator, but be a little bit less quick. It had quite the opposite effect. I only went one mile an hour faster, but I dropped six tenths off the zero to 30, 6.2. And I dropped six tenths off the one eighth mile, 15 seconds flat. So it actually got quicker and not much faster. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I suspected I would not be that high. There's my line right there. You can see it's just about to the top of the variator. I'll put a new one on here. I don't see it going a lot higher than that. We're right there at the edge. I figured to get more top speed, we need to go higher on the variator with heavier roller weights. It looks like to me those three gram roller weights are going to the top. I'm at 9,400 RPM when I'm hitting 47 miles an hour. I don't want to go up much more. I like that RPM. I don't want to lose my power. So maybe I'll try four gram. We'll go up one gram and see if that makes a difference. One gram is going to cost me almost a thousand RPM. So this might put me around 8,000 RPM and I won't have the power to go that fast maybe. I guess there's only one way to find out. We got to give it a try. The kit came with 6.9 gram rollers. I don't know whose 50 is making enough power to push 7 gram rollers or 6.9. But I guess if they had the little teeny wheel on it, scooters with the little small wheel, when I had that on there, I was turning 11,000 RPM. So I probably could have ran those heavier rollers with this big fat wheel. It's really a gear up mod. So we're not really running heavy rollers on these mad dogs like they are on regular scooters. I think these 4 grams might even be too heavy for it. It idles nice and low. Sounds good. The four gram rollers already feel better. It doesn't like go crazy on the RPMs now. Yeah, there's 8,000. It's about 1,000 RPM lower. So hopefully I'll still be able to make RPM up top. But this is a lot nicer for uh, just cruising around. Yeah, these feel really good. Now that I'm lugging it down, you can listen for this bog right here, right there. So I probably need to richen up the idle jet and maybe the needle position also. Now that I've got the uh, bigger piston in it, you can tell it lugs down right there when I take off. It's probably too lean. Kind of a little bit of, no, it's not really bogging, it's a little more of a pop and a backfire. It's usually a lean condition. So I think I have the carb too lean on the bottom doesn't affect the top speed at all so I'm not worried about it now I can tune that out later but this still has the old pilot jet and needle setting from the 49 cc I expect it's going to need more the 8500 rpm 41 miles an hour 
46, 47. Now it's shifted up only at 8,000 RPM. Yeah, it may not can make RPM on this. At 48 miles an hour though, it's going faster. I just don't have the RPMs I want. There's 49. I'm not making RPMs. Once it shifts all the way up, and I assume it's getting all the way to the end of that variator because I'm dropping down to 8,000 RPM. So what I think I'll do to make RPMs, I don't want to put lighter rollers in it because it limits my top speed. I need to make more power, burn more fuel. I think I'm going to try to uh, increase the jet on this carburetor to get more RPMs. Yeah, right now it feels great. I think I like these rollers. These are four gram rollers. And they seem to be uh, doing the trick. I just need another 1,000 RPM on top of this. I think it'll be perfect. So nice to be able to cruise on my 45 mile an hour road, stay with traffic and not be the guy in the way. Yeah, well, that's a bummer. Did not record my eighth mile. Oh well, the 49 miles an hour, it still felt plenty peppy. I'm not too worried about that. I'll get a better recording on the zero to 30 and the eighth whenever I change the carburetor. But yeah, 49 miles an hour. With the four ground rollers, I think I'm there on the variator. My next thing I want to do, I think, is uh, start tuning the carburetor. I got it going faster with gearing, and the logical sequence would be, well, let's gear it up more. You have to be really careful with gearing. Most vehicles are not fastest in their top gear. It's like overdrive. You take a uh, stick shift with a six-speed transmission, it's probably gonna have the highest top speed in fifth gear. Think about when you go to pass someone in your car, if you just step on the gas and that transmission didn't knock down into the passing gear, that car would just hesitate and bog. It would barely go anywhere. But it kicks down into that lower gear, the RPMs come up, you can make more power, you go faster. So I've got the gearing where I think I like because I'm at 8,000 RPM. And now I've got 8, 9, 10, that's 2,000 RPM of speed I'm missing out on. 8,200 RPM. It's a little bit more, but not much. It dropped down to 8,000 RPM again. 7,800 RPM, there's 49. Yeah, it's really about the same. It just got a little bit quicker. So the bigger jet I put in there, it put me at 14.2 in the eighth mile. That's eight tenths faster, 5.1. That's significantly faster in the zero to 30. So I went from a 95 to a 100 main jet. I didn't make any more top speed. I did get quicker. The RPM was about the same. I have the pilot jet and the needle jet too lean. When the needle jet opens, it comes on to the main jet. My takeoffs got quicker, which they did. Zero to 30 was quicker and the eighth of mile was quicker. So it would lead you to believe that that main jet is a better choice, but it may not be. I may just be too lean down bottom. The main jet is helping resolve that lean situation. I may be too rich with that 100, and that's why I didn't make the RPMs. What I'm going to do is put a 110 in it, and I think it might be too rich, but this was my next size up. This will confirm that I'm too rich, it goes bad, then I'll come back and put this 98 in it. We'll try that. If you have your bike worked on by a shop, they're just going to throw the recommended jet in it. They're not going to do all this work. It sucks, but you got to do it. You could be missing out on a lot of power. A bike that's running too rich or too lean will not make RPM. And if you're not making RPM, you're losing top speed. Now this bike runs fine so far. I mean, to me, the casual observer, with anything from a 95 jet to now a 110, only one of those jets is right. You get a bike from a shop, it's not tuned. It's just going to be uh, one of these jets in there. And it's probably a long ways from perfect. Yeah, I'm actually pulling out in front of traffic now. That's how fast this thing is. It's 8,100. I'm actually making a little more RPM with that 110 jet. They're geared down to 8,000, 7,900. There's 50 miles an hour. 7,900 RPM and 50 miles an hour. That's pretty good. There's 51. Yeah, just for a little bit. Went back to 50. So yeah, maybe it was too lean and the richer jet did help. But I'm still not making RPM like I thought I should be. 50 miles an hour seems like a good milestone. It's kind of nice sometimes to see the process of how to try to make these things faster. 
So that's what I'm trying to show you. But I gotta find five more miles an hour somewhere, and my goal is 55.